We've been enjoying some wonderfully fine weather, which has brought us not only bright sunny days, but also clear, cloud-free nights, perfect for stargazing. Here are some tips for getting the most out of your patch of sky. It can still cool off in the evenings, so you might want to dress a bit warmer than you think you have to. You can always bring out a mug of tea or hot chocolate to keep you company. And one of the advantages of giving it a go in your own garden means that you can always go back inside to warm up if you have to. Turn off what lights you can and try to find the corner of your garden that gives you the darkest view. If you're in an urban area, like I am, you'll probably find that there's quite a lot of light pollution from indoor and outdoor lights, street lights, and glare off of buildings. Light pollution is also a problem for our night wildlife, so turning off lights that you don't need is always a good idea, even if you're not going to be out stargazing. Unfortunately, there's not too much we can do about light pollution while we're limited to our own gardens, but you will still be able to see the brightest stars in the sky, even if you're in the middle of the city. Give yourself long enough to let your eyes adjust to the dark. You will be able to see more once you become attuned. You don't need any special equipment to look at the night sky, but if you have them, you can put your binoculars to good use, looking at stars as well as birds. You'll find that you can see a little bit more detail and the different colors of the stars come through more clearly. I'd also recommend having a look at the moon. It's spectacular close up. Finally, it can be a little more fun stargazing if you know something about what you're looking at or if you go out to find a particular constellation or feature. There are lots of star maps and resources online to give you ideas of what is out there to find and where to find it. But I have a few favorite things that I still look for every time I'm out and that you should be able to see too. In this video, we'll look at how to find Polaris, the North Star. This is a useful one because if you can find the North Star, then you can always find North. Because the Earth rotates on its axis, the constellations appear to move like a clock face through the night, but there's one star that sits directly above the North Pole and thus appears fixed. The easiest way to find it is to start by finding the Big Dipper, or the Plough. This seven-star constellation is quite bright and easy to find. There are four stars forming the bowl of the Dipper, and then three stars coming off one end to form a crooked line for the handle. An imaginary line connecting the two outermost stars of the bowl and extending above the open end of the bowl points to Polaris. It should be found at a distance of about one Big Dipper length. Polaris forms the last star of the handle of the Little Dipper, which can be used to confirm its position. The Little Dipper has much the same form as the Big Dipper, but it's smaller and less bright, which can make it tricky to spot if it's not very dark. Since the constellations move through the night, the orientation may be different from my diagram here, and it may even be upside down, but these two stars always point the way to Polaris. If you orient yourself so that you are looking squarely at the North Star, you will be facing more or less true north. You can test this with the compass on your phone. Orion the Hunter is one of the easiest constellations to find, and in this video, I will show you how to identify Orion and some of its interesting features. Look for the three equally spaced stars forming Orion's belt. In a trapezoidal pattern above and below the belt are four bright stars that represent Orion's shoulders and his knees. The brightest star in Orion is at the bottom right, a blue-white star called Rigel. Rigel is actually a system of at least four stars, although it looks like a single point of light to the eye. It looks blue because it burns very hot, about twice as hot as our sun. At the top left is the orange-coloured Betelgeuse, a supermassive red giant. Imagined at the centre of our solar system, it would swallow the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and possibly even Jupiter. It is red and so big because it will soon reach the end of its life. When it does finally go, it will explode in a huge supernova that will be visible from Earth. According to recent simulations, it will look like another moon in the sky for three months. But soon, in astronomical terms, means any time in the next hundred thousand years. So while I would love to see it happen in my lifetime, I'm not holding my breath. If you've got binoculars, have a look at these stars to see their colours more clearly, and then move to Orion's sword below the middle star of the belt, 
to see the cluster of stars here, and even the Orion Nebula, looking like a hazy splodge. If you live in an urban area, there will probably be more light pollution, and the fainter constellations might be harder to pick out. But there's one object in the night sky that stands out from the rest. Not a star, but a planet. Venus is usually the second brightest thing out there after the moon. Look for it within a few hours after sunset, before it gets really dark. About now, actually. It's also a brilliant time to keep an eye out for foraging bats. And if finding Venus gives you a taste for spotting planets, I'll include a link to the Sky at Night guide that shows where the other planets visible to the naked eye will be this month. The third brightest object in the sky is not a planet or a star, it's the International Space Station. It looks very much like a bright star, except that it moves across the sky in a straight line and fairly quick. It could be mistaken for an airplane, except that it has no flashing lights and looks to be flying much higher, which it is. The ISS circles the Earth every 92 minutes, but it doesn't follow the same orbital path every time, which means that you won't be able to see it every night. If you want to make sure that you see it, you should check NASA's Spot the Station website to find out when it will be over your town.